the Department of Public Works Subcommittee and Town Council meeting Monday, April 12, 2021. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Department of Public Works Town Council is being conducted via hybrid remote participation only. No in-person attendance or members of the public will be permitted in the council chambers and every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A reminder that persons who would like to... Hold on. Who would like to view this meeting while in progress may do so by watching Southbridge Cable Access Channel 192 or by remote part information noted below. We will post a record of this meeting on the town's website at www.ci.southbridge.mass.us as soon as we are able. A roll call vote is required for all votes taken under this order. So, um, I'll take a roll call. I'm here, Chairman Marchetti. Um, Councillor Dow? Present. Councillor Steves? Present, remotely. Citizen Member Lazo? Present. Citizen Member Bemis? Uh, and I will make note that uh, the DPW Director, Heather Blakely, is here. Karen Harnois, the Finance Director, and the Town Manager, Michael McCall, is also in attendance. Agenda item number one. The review of the FY 2022 Department of Public Works budget in the amount of one million eight hundred and thirty-seven thousand twenty-seven, and entertain a motion to vote to submit to council as presented. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Town Manager. Yes. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll hand this over momentarily to Ms. Blakely. Um, we met with Ms. Harnoy, so we went over uh, the DPW budget together line by line. Um, it's a rather modest increase overall. It's 1.2%, which is, uh, I believe, exactly in line with the Consumer Price Index this, this past year. Uh, this Blakely had indicated at the time that we went through it, essentially the salary line is, is level. That's because of turnover and the fact that they've been able to hire people in their lower steps. Similarly, the, uh, the part-time salaries, that's going to go up in a little bit um, due to uh, some of the changes in minimum wage. There's been some impact on longevity, licenses, and stipends, and there's been some changes in utility costs. But again, um, keeping with the level service budget that everybody else has done, I would say that uh, Ms. Blakely has did a very good job um, working within her means over this past year, and it's reflected in the bottom line. And with that, I would pass it over to her for any specific questions about her FY22 budget. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Heather? Good evening. Um, so I will just point out the everybody has a 2% increase. I have two members in the department that have two-step increases. Um, Mr. Harding, who is the operations manager, took over this year. Um, he obviously, he had started at a lower salary. It reflects him going to step one. And our new employee, Mr. C. McCauley, is going from his minimum step to a step one, uh, partly through the year. So those two are the only that um, two employees that aren't getting just the 2% that will also be seeing a step increase. Um, then the next line that you will see a larger increase is the part-time salaries. This is because this year I def we took the time to actually calculate based on what we would want. That's two employees for 38 hours a week. Um, basically it's, it's four nine and a half hour days um, because in the summertime when we're going to want them to work, that's when we are working. So we want them to work the whole period with a lunch break. They don't get paid lunch. It will be 
a lunch break, so it's th um, nine and a half hour days, four days a week, Monday through Thursday. Um, we don't work on Fridays in the summer. We work four tens is the current union schedule. So we want them to work at the same time as that, and that, that is at minimum wage. But it is reflected, the minimum wage increase for the end for next year is reflected for next June. So there's cost in here for next June to cover any salaries and this. So that has resulted in that increase there. But I did want to have it in budget because I know that is our goal. Um, I do feel like it's something that we should shoot for. I would say in the last two years we haven't been successful of getting this many hours. Um, for the two people, but I'm hopeful this year. We've done some reach out, some reaching out already. It is already posted, so you guys do know it is on the town's website that it's posted for our summer employees already. And we've reached out to Bay Path already. I was actually on a call with them. We may be even be able to get a co-op student that was, is funded. So we're trying to work some things right now. The next increase that you see is longevity. There's one new person added to longevity. That is myself. I will be here 10 years next spring. The license and stipends actually went down a little and that is because of change in personnel over from last year to this year. Um, it is license dependent what our stipends are. Um, so they can change because we actually give partial credit for stipends if you get a license midway through the year, but this is reflecting our current stipend license, sure. And then in electricity, you can see we have upped the electricity in the 001 account, which is a result of looking at what the electricity was this year. Um, it, it's not a large increase, but it just gives us a little bit more flexibility in that line item. It's not a very large line item as it is. We just want to make sure that we don't go up. We've been talking a lot about electricity and how we don't have a lot of good control over what National Grid is charging us. So we just want to make sure we have that adequately funded. funded. Um, Heather? Yes? Did I, did I miss something? Did you skip tool maintenance and allowance and uniform, or, or did I miss that? I, I skipped them because oh. they were level funded, but okay. I All right. can... All right. If you don't mind, just mention... Yep, so we have tool allowance at $3,000. That's level funded. That's contractual in right. um, their contract. Okay. Uniform allowance is level funded. Again, um, we, that covers their contractual... Um, stipends that they get for uniforms plus the uniforms that we cover for them so they get their boot allowance comes out of that line and the uniform service that we have. Then we're back to electricity. For the 425 account is for town hall. I mean, it has a slight increase. Again, it was just projecting out over what this year's cost is and making sure we have enough to cover for next year. <coughs> The 431 account is staying level funded. 431 is um, that's water and sewer. I'm on the wrong one. Traffic lights and school lights. I just want to make sure I'm not misinforming you. So we break them into different sections when we pay them and we track the costs differently. So we kind of group them. So it's all our traffic lights the actual traffic signals and our school zone lights. Um, in the future, I might be looking at a lot of our school zone lights, if you look at them, need to be replaced. They're starting to rot out. Um, they're quite expensive to ex replace, but I want to think about replacing them with solar lights because they are a system that we can go solar and it would cut out having a national grid bill for. And I know everybody's like, well, it's not really that big a deal, but if you're paying five or six national grid bills five or six times a year and there's a minimum charge on them, eventually I think they're an easy thing to go solar and we never have to worry about paying a bill on them again, only maintenance of this equipment. Most of them were put up probably 20 years ago and they're just reaching their useful life, they're just getting to that point. 499 to electricity is DPW. We've been doing really well since we've changed over to our 
new lighting, so I did feel comfortable in decreasing this line item this year. We waited for the last couple of years just to make sure, but we were still on that same trend, so we're, we're good. Next is water and sewer, 001, the 01 account is water and sewer for various buildings, cemetery, the res go into there. Um, we did decrease this a little bit because we really haven't been using very much water at any of these locations or having the charges, so I felt good about just keeping it, decreasing it to a nice round number. A lot of those other weird numbers of like a $1,818 came because we just kept on putting the standard percentages on. Oh, we think it's going to be an 8% this increase and we just didn't really, and I'm like, oh, at some point it just doesn't make sense. I'm just going to kind of say, okay, we don't need this much. We'll just smooth these limbers out. So you'll see that change reflected. The two, four. Uh, Go ahead. Hold on. Councilor Steves. Yeah, regarding the water and sewer lines, um, did you jump back to looking at pre-COVID numbers? Because obviously those would be lower because of COVID because the buildings aren't being used as much. How, would, how does your, what you're proposing for the budget compare to like two years ago? So two years ago, the actual in 2020, well, it was $1,201 was the previous year number. I, I can go back, but projecting out for this year, it's looking pretty much the same. Because we have one the more water, billing cycle. For the water and sewer? Because I'm thinking, obviously, if those buildings were often relatively closed, there wasn't the public, ex public access to them, they obviously would be having less water and sewer. They, they're not building that really public accesses anyways. Those three buildings oh, in oh. there are more street field house, which is not, a, it's not publicly accessed anyways. The, um, High Street, the Res, and the cemetery. So the cemetery isn't a public access building, it's just private. It's just us. You've got the town hall though, and the, the sewer, the irrigation for the playing fields that obviously if they weren't having games, they weren't irrigating it. I personally, I don't know if it makes much sense to irrigate them anyway, but um, that's a different issue. Just thought I'd, just thought I'd ask. Thank you, Councilor. Do you want to continue, Heather? Yep. So town hall, we did reduce. Again, it was 1,416 the year before. This year, it's still projecting out to be the same, so we reduced it to 2,000. So it is less than what we had budgeted last year, but I still think we're in an acceptable range. The big decrease, we did decrease for the 428 account for water and sewer is our irrigation in our fields. We have been doing less and less irrigation on our fields. Um, the only irrigation we turned on last year was at the common. We didn't really turn on irrigation systems at any of our other fields. Um, we haven't turned on irrigation at any of our other fields in the last three years. Um, I will tell you that we are very close to seeing an irrigation ban by the state anyways on things of that nature, which we, they can't, we don't have a permit that requires that right now. We likely will in the future. And the state is, there is some legislation that is going through the state that we actually have been watching very closely through our water department and given some feedback because there is a push to change our permit to actually force us to comply with, with any drought guidance, which would reduce any irrigation that we could do. So it wouldn't just be for us, it's for all of our residents that we were looking at that. Um, you know, irrigation is one of those tricky things. The more you water it, the more you have to mow it, the more you have to do a lot of different things on it. I understand the benefit in certain locations, and I do like it around our, our plants because it des definitely keeps our common plants and our, um, our rotary looking nice when we do water them. I, I totally understand that. I totally like that area to look really spoof, you know, spiffed up and look nice. But, so I don't want to take it away completely, but I will say putting a limit on it <clears throat> might, in my, it, I don't want to just spend it and waste the money either. So. 
499. Basically, I just flatlined it where it was. I just took away the $37, uh, $57 and made it 4,000. So I didn't increase our water and sewer based on what of an increase of the rates or anything. I think we will be fine in those parameters. The next is a repair and maintenance of equipment. That's been flatlined. This is um, for our traffic lights, our radio repairs, our fuel dispensing system, and general repairs to any small equipment. That's what comes out of that line item. The next line item is repair and maintenance of um, MV. This is for actually for the airport. Um, we have a line item in our budget for airport repairs. It was put in previous to me. Um, I think there was a time frame that the airport was using the DPW a lot more than, a little bit of feedback here, a lot more than what um, they do now. And they didn't have any money in their budget to repair any of their equipment. So someone sometimes said, well, we're going to put a line in the DPW's budget. We, the only thing in the past couple of years that we've taken out of it is inspection for their vehicles because they come down and get their vehicles inspected. For the most part, there's been very minor repairs. We haven't had major repairs on their equipment in the last couple of years. So I felt comfortable instead of just keeping it at 5,000 and having it sit there to reduce it to 2,500. The next item is the data processing account. Um, this is for high, for the maintenance. It concludes our internet, um, computer service, and our ESRI license, which is our GIS license. The next one is repair of buildings, maintenance, and grounds. Again, there's four, three accounts here. We have a general account, the 001, for, for our miscellaneous buildings various buildings, which is just $1,000 in case something happened. Like this year, I know we have to do some repairs to the roof on the res. Some of that could come out of there. Um, this is really supposed to be for services that are on, done in a building, these line items. But there's a safety there of $1,000. 425 is for town hall. So it, it's for the heating repairs. It's for the heating co HVAC contract that we have. It's for the elevator maintenance contact track we have, elevator inspection, um, security, fire system inspection and repair. So anything that we have to have an outside vendor come in comes out of that line, that 425. And we are, we are keeping it flat. Even, even though our contract for our HVAC is minorly going up this year. 499 is the same but that is for the DPW. Same idea. I have too many pieces of paper on there. Um, our overhead cranes, our vehicle lifts, our man lifts, they all get inspected every year. All of those costs come out of there. Our heating maintenance, our overhead doors, our alarm system, they all come out of there. The next one is our copier leases. So we have um, an OSE, which is our large format copier, and a RICO, which is our RICO, our regular format copier at the DPW. Rentals and leases is not, we didn't even put anything in there this year. Oh no, we have a thousand, what do we do? We've gone back and, so this would be, yeah, so if, say there's a piece of equipment that I need to rent an excavator for a day. We don't, we don't have an excavator. It would come out of this line item. For something that we don't have that we might need to rent, it at least gives us a line item to be able to rent a small piece of equipment if we needed it. Uh, or a big piece of equipment, because $1,000 will get you a couple days on an excavator, maybe, <laughs> depending on where you get it from. Um, you know, a lift, there was one point last year we had to rent a lift at the wastewater treatment plant didn't come out of this budget, but we had to rent a lift that we needed. So that, those type of things, something special comes up, it gives us a line item to rent it from.
gear and uniforms. This is for gear that we have to purchase. We budget to be able to replace rain boots, rain gear, chainsaw chaps, gloves, hard hats, vests, a couple of them every year. <clears throat> Specialized services. This includes our membership to the Stormwater Intermunicipal Agreement that is the Central Mass Stormwater Commission. This includes when we have to pay for police. Um, that's the largest cost out of that. That's budgeted at $20,000 a year um, for police duties for anything that we're doing. It includes our drug testing, um, MS4 stormwater report assistance if we need it, and CMRPC GIS assistance. Maintenance on trees. So this is one that I have requested a $5,000 increase in. Um, I have already come back to you this year for a transfer for additional money, um, and we haven't even started the spring season yet. Um, of course, this is an estimate. I'm hoping that it will get less, but we've already basically spent $10,000 before we even hit spring this year. So I will say this is mostly because it's two things. There, um, there's a boar that's getting into the beech trees that's killing a lot of the ash in the beech tree. Um, and then there's also, because we had gypsy moss, there are still trees that, because of the two years of being hit by gypsy moss, are, are dying and not coming back. We're still seeing the results of that from the last couple of years. So I do expect there's going to be more trees this spring as, as spring hits that aren't going to foliage out and we're going to be called. And, um, it's one of these things that if it's our tree and it's dead, we basically have to take it down. And there's many of them that, some of them we are able to take down in-house and any of that we can, we do, but a lot of them we can't and we'll have to hire someone to take down. So depending on the size and where the power lines are and what kind of, how busy the road is, kind of determines all of those things, so. Advertising. Um, this is just in case we need to advertise for any bids that we have going out. Um, if it's not in the budget for in that project, we'll cover it under this advertising account. We have to advertise all our bids, to advertise, um, you know, in the paper for, with an ad for under procurement. Printing forms, there are some specialty forms that we have in the office. Um, so when we run out, we need to have a budget. We have some triplet forms for different permits that we use, et cetera. Office supplies. Copier machine. This is for our copier machine repairs and supplies, our ink and our toner. So the, this is for, the next line is for any upgrades to our computer systems, um, software and supplies, um, new software updates, computer supplies, we have anything break, monitors, things of that nature. M&I building, that's maintenance and improvements on buildings. This is for materials only repairs. Um, so again, we have three accounts. We have a general miscellaneous account budget at $250 um, for those miscellaneous buildings, usually like Moore Street Fieldhouse, the res, the cemetery building, non-buildings that aren't occupied by any other, um, any other, you know, not police fire type of things. The, two, the 425 account is maintenance improvement at the town hall. So that's where the paint that we did downstairs came from. Um, we can, things that we can handle in house, but we have to go buy the supplies to do. That's the way you look at these accounts. Same here, 499. Things that we can handle in house, that's for DPW. So we just divided them up between town hall and DPW so that we can kind of track the costs that we put into them. Janitorial supplies, that actually covers both buildings, town hall, DPW. Um, buildings and grounds, this is our street sweeping, hand tools, um, 
safety barricades, motor vehicle, where am I? Cemetery, oh, cemetery supplies. So this is, covers any of the materials that we need for the cemetery, um, including loam, seed, fertilizer, fill, you know, whatever we need to do down there. They're not big budgets. There's nothing glorious here. Motor vehicle parts and accessory. This is for the repair of our motor vehicles. Um, this is DPW motor vehicles too only, not anybody else's, this is just ours. Then we have a small item for health supplies. We have to keep a um, first aid kit updated and current per OSHA. And we still have to comply with all of that, so we have that in there. Chemical and lab, that's for our acetylene, our Chemex, um, our washing chemicals in our, um, and our torches and things of that nature. Signs and posts, that's for, we take some of our traffic paint out of here that we do ourselves, and we also buy our replacement signs and posts. Um, we go through a lot of signs, um, as everybody seems to understand. Whenever a sign gets taken down, we're the ones who have to end up repairing it. Sometimes we get lucky, and there might be an insurance that com that we can cover it in. But a, a lot of times, you know, something gets hit, and nobody nobody knows who's responsible. Storm sewers and culverts, it's level funded. We did up this one a couple years ago, which helps because um, this was something that we were always coming back for more money. Um, we have a lot of catch basins in this town and we have a lot of catch basins that need a lot of repair and that aren't, I will say this right now, aren't MS4 compliant whatsoever at all. It, as we go around and do more streets and do work on more streets, you will see us repair, replacing more catch basins with compliant ones, but you go to most of our catch basins and they're a glorified hole underground with no sump in them and, you know, bricks and they're, they're, they can be made out of anything. We, found, we find them made out of old um, train tracks and for metal and it's very interesting. It's a, archaeological dig in itself sometimes so but we're trying to get them more compliant um, but them if I if sometimes we just have to repair what's in place and leave it and sometimes we can do a more major repair if I was to repair all of them with catch base with actual concrete catch basins we'd be looking at a thousand dollars a catch basin so it's big bucks and it's not one day of work like it takes us now, it would probably be two or three days of work and a much bigger hole. So it's, it's all about time and sometimes we're gonna have to make some decisions if I know a road's gonna be worked on soon and repaved, those are the ones I'm gonna wanna replace. And we might take some more time to replace the ones on that street as opposed to just repairing them um, when we find them in bad shape. Your question? No. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Does anybody have a question? No, I don't have a question on that. <laughs> He's just agreeing with me. <laughs> well, I, I, I know I've seen them fall in and I see what they're made of. Uh, they're not even uh, water struck brick. No. And they're falling apart and they're dro dropping down into the sewer and going down the line, which makes more problems. Um. Next is road materials. Um, we actually did up this budget a couple years ago, which did help. It allows us to do more larger patches, and we will be continuing to do that. It's, it covers both our hot and our cold mix all through the winter, this blind item. Um, so now that we're getting to spring, we'll see where we are in the budget, and if we can bid out some small jobs under this line item for small patches, we will, because you know if there's one section that's causing a lot of potholes and it's only we can do it underneath our $10,000 level. We'll probably go out for some requests for quotes and get that done. <clears throat> Almost halfway there. Sidewalk materials. It's level funded. 
I will tell you, I know it looks like we haven't done anything in the last couple of years, but we've been working off of a capital account number instead of this number. So we've been trying to spend down the capital account we have for sidewalks. So last year we did do Elm Street, but having this money there, knowing that we can do, this isn't going to take us very far, but if we can order a couple loads of concrete, maybe we can do some more. So we'll be looking at doing more sidewalks this spring. Um, and identifying panels that need to be replaced. We're kind, this isn't going to do a whole road of sidewalks. It's kind of a panel by panel if there's a certain number of panels in a certain area that look really bad. Um, one area that I would like to target is down in, on Main Street itself, down from where we're actually doing in our project area past in front of the bank um, down there. There's some pretty bad sidewalks on that one stretch. Uh, between the capital account and this account, I think we could get a pretty good size of those areas done. Um, but I need to, we need to be able to get some time to get those quotes together and see when we can get out there and do that work. Maintenance of streets of grounds. So this is our center line painting, our end line painting, our um, flowers in, and our herbicide materials which we don't do as much anymore, but we still have it in there. But our center line painting, edge line painting, that gets bit out and comes out of here. Improvements to private ways, that's level funded. That's the request forms that need to be put in. I would expect we'll be getting some this spring. Miscellaneous safety supplies, traffic cones, traffic barrels, we're always having to replace those. Recreational materials, again, this has been pretty much just at 2,500 over the year. Um, this is all we get for every one of the fields. Uh, we will be looking at doing uh, some work out of on the skate park up there, but I can tell you it's not gonna, the money doesn't go very far. We do need to buy new playground grade um, chips. Um, which are more expensive. We haven't had to buy them in the la last year. We didn't have to purchase them because we had some from the year before. We buy them in bulk and store them. Uh, Councilor Adams had a question. Twenty five hundred. You and I have talked quite a few times about this. Do you need more money in this town? You're talking about all the parks in this town that are well used. <laughs> Honestly, yes. If we want to maintain them at the level that somebody needs to be maintaining them at, it, there probably needs to be more money. Um, it's, we make decisions all the time, you know, how much, how much of the skate park are we going to replace? How much can we do? Um, so I'm sure I could walk around. I, the good news is we have one nice new playground down on Henry Street and it's in great shape and it's been staying in great shape which is amazing. <laughs> and um, I, think, I think additional funds in this account could help go a long way. oh, well, I could easily pay, spend this whole account up at the skate park and still not have enough money. So I guess doubling it would be a good start. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Councilor, if you could use the mic, that would Sorry. be helpful. Yeah. So I was so used to it. Can you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I could hear you without it. <laughs> item is um, it's parts and accessories for non-vehicles. So this would be for all our small equipment repair. Engineering supplies, drafting materials, survey equipment. We just bought a new um, wheel because ours was skipping. So measuring wheel for paving and things of that nature. License permit and taxes. These um, include our hydraulic license renewals. We reimburse our employees for those. Um, they have lots of them. Inspection stickers, our testing fee for the vehicles. Our, um, we have to be willing to cover the 
DOT physicals, fuel license renewals, elevator license renewal, hazardous waste site renewal, which is the biggest one. Um, so that covers all of those. Mileage, we have minor in case somebody used their private vehicle to go somewhere. Conferences and meetings. This year it has been increased because we have to do our hydraulic license training. Um, every two years we have to train all of our personnel that have hydraulic licenses. It's part of their license to be able to be renewed and it's a two year cycle. So it's every other year, you see this cost go up and down every, every two years. Do subscription and periodicals. That is for your three professional staff, myself, Matt, uh, deputy director, and the operations manager. Small capital. So this is something that we put in last year in case there was Small things that came up in the middle of the year that we didn't have a budget for, for addressing on the buildings um, at DPW. Uh, for example, I know that my AC split in my, the AC split that goes in the computer room is down and is going to need to be replaced. That would be coming out of this account. So it's to cover those small capital items for buildings that weren't planned for. It's kind of a safety account, We're trying to get like a safety net built into our different budgets in case something happens. Because um, we really didn't have that, there's not a really good place to have that budgeted in, in any of our light items. Um, it's something that we noticed in our facilities management plan that there isn't really a, you know, in water and sewer, I kind of have a, a capital reserve. So if something goes wrong, we can vote it out of capital reserve. This is kind of what that is. I increased it a little bit this year, still trying to keep our budget low but knowing that we're going to have these costs that are going to come up. Furniture, we, just, we keep a small budget in case we have to buy a new chair or anything for anyone. Sometimes they do break. General equipment, we try to keep this every year. We place a, suit, a couple different pieces of equipment. I can tell you what they are. I think they are listed in your details. Somewhere I have that. <laughs> This is a list that I have the guys give me of what they're looking for and try to prioritize it. Sometimes they have things that I kind of say, I don't know what you're talking about, but. So a nine inch cutoff saw, a 16 inch chainsaw, um, a frame, a Mohawk lift um, for small equipment and a concrete chain cutting chainsaw are on their list. The next two things were a John Deere Gator, and I kind of was like, yeah, we're, that's, that's over and beyond, so you're not, we're not doing $7,000 this year, guys, sorry. So that's, we broke it at that. And then there's nothing in office supplies this year, and that gets you to my 1.2% budget increase. Thank you, thank you, Heather. So I'm gonna open it up to questions, but first, before I do, I just wanted to mention, because I forgot to mention it at the beginning, that we have other counselors here tonight. Counselor Catrona, Counselor Adams, Counselor Daniel, and Counselor Ryan are also in attendance. So I will open it up to discussion if anybody wants to ask other questions. Counselor Catrona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, Heather, out of the janitorial supplies, it, is any of that reimbursed from the COVID? monies from this year? I know it's a small amount. Um, I th originally, I think they thought it was going to be able to re be reversible, but they said for buildings that you already have cleaning supplies, I believe, I don't know if Karen's still on, but we haven't asked for any reimbursables from that at this point, I don't believe. Okay. Thank you. And you mentioned... I believe we did when we went out and had somebody else clean, but like those are just for internal cleaning. Okay, yep. thank you. Um, in the, the in the fifty, let me see where was it? In the maintenance for the trees. Yes. I agree. That, do you have a contract with a specific company? 
No, when we bid out a tree, we mark the tree and then we call three or four different local tree companies and ask them to give us prices on them. And they bid, basically, you know, call in a price and give us a bid um, when they go out and look at the tree. And it varies who comes. You know, we use Dennis Benoit a lot. Mm -hmm. We use Jay Bonin a lot. Um, Advantage is bid on and one trees. Um, Ricky LaFleche is bid on trees. Um, so we, we call and see who responds. Some, it, honestly, what usually happens is it depends on how busy they are. You know, when we're calling, we usually want the tree down within the next week and a half, two weeks, if we can, because it's a concern. Um, so it depends on how busy they are, what, what, how good a price they give us, okay. too. And, or if they're already working, if, you know, they know they're t taking a tree across the street down next week, and they can tag team sure. it together, they're going to give us a better price. Sure. Or if we have two or three trees in the same area, we might get a better price. And it also depends on what, you know, they have, each one of them have different types of equipment, whether they have their own crane or not, sometimes can weigh into that. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to either Heather or to the town manager, we've heard a lot in the budget, or I've heard a lot in the budget going through the last few meetings of copiers, ink, and toner. Is there one supplier for every department? Do we have a contract with the town, or is this each department on their own? I can probably answer that just as well as they can. Um, the copier, we have a contract, well, RICO is the main supplier for the copiers themselves here. Um, there's a main overall contract and it's based on a state bid contract that they came in and did the prices, but all of our copiers here in town are RICO copiers and that's where our leases are from. Okay. Um, the toner and the supplies, each individual department buys those. Um, based on what their needs are. At least my department buys their own. And we usually price them out at WB or um, Staples. We, we kind of go on all the different websites when we need something and see who gives us the best price at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Does anyone else? Councilor Adams? Must be this chair over here with questions. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I, I know we could probably... Uh, argue this point line item by line item, but I'd recommend to the subcommittee to raise the recreational line item to, to, uh, to $5,000 from 2500 Every single year since I've been on council, we've been dealing with the skate park. Every year. And some people say, take it down. And, and the thing is, that skate park is well used all the way until the winter time when there is no ice. We talked to a young man the other day. He uses it all the time with his bike and, and his, motor, or his uh, skateboard. But I will say that park specifically is used all the time. If you go down to Henry Street on the weekends and even during the week nights, it's heavily used as well. All these parks get 2,500 bucks to maintain. Is there a plan in place down the road? There, there's formulated, I am formulating a plan to bring um, to the town manager later on. But in the short term, they need plywood. The, those, uh, the screws that they utilize rot every couple of years and they break off. The skeletons under the skate park are rot. I mean, once they put the surface on there and you know put the plywood up there and they paint over it, a couple years later you're pulling it right back up if you don't use steel or some type of sheet metal. Um, so I would highly recommend the subcommittee to raise it up just a little bit for them. Uh, but we do this every single year. 500 bucks doesn't go a long way for that skate park, a well-used park at that. So um, that's my recommendation to the subcommittee. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Council Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Heather. If that proposed raise was to go through, Heather, would that be enough to do everything you need to to get the skate park up and functional and running, or are you still going to need more money? Because if we're going to talk about doing this, let's do this. That's my position. Like, at the end of the day, I don't want to just continue to piecemeal it. If you need more, I, I want to know now you need more. So I, I met with Councillor Adams up there the other day to look at the equipment and look it up there. The issue up there is having a skate park that's constructed out of wood and plywood that sits out there and exposed to the elements and gets beat on and used, and, and which it should, you know. It's, 
a temporary skate park, if you want to do something permanent, a new park needs to be designed that's designed to be permanent. Whether it's concrete, whether it's some type of steel and plexiglass, whether it's some type of different type of material, it's not really the proper material. It's always going to need to be replaced. There's always going to be sections that are gonna rot. It's just the nature of what it is and that it's out exposed to the elements. It's not built to be a house and shed and have a roof over it, so it's always exposed to the water and the water sitting on it. And, you know, we could make it perfect for, build, build every single one up there perfect and brand new. And in next year, somebody could break a piece of it. And whether it was on purpose or accidental, it still needs to be repaired. Um, it's just the nature of what that skate park is built out of. So it's always going to do maintenance if we keep it the way it is. So I, I'm, I, truthfully, at this point, there's probably one piece up there that was rebuilt last year or two years ago completely. And every single other, one of the other pieces would need to be dismantled and taken down and rebuilt. And still then, it's only going to be good for a couple of years, just because of what it's built out of. If I can continue, Mr. Certainly. Chair. Um, I, I guess my question was more pointed to, I, 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 I understand that you, we're going to need a ton more money if we want to make it permanent, but to keep up the repairs on the current structures, is this, if the increase was made, would that be enough to properly maintain it for the next year? Or is that still not enough, I guess is my question. <sighs> I think $2,500 in addition to the 1000 so maybe $3,000 total up there will go a long way. I know we just priced out plywood and it's expensive, um, but it's going to go a long way. But we need metal. I mean, I, it's, how much do you want me to spend on it? I could have a bottomless pit up there. I mean, it's, it's I don't know. I just don't have, I don't want to tell you I need $10,000 because that's probably what I need. Okay, that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Councilor Lazo, our uh, citizen. Uh, no, that's my brother. <laughs> um, he used to be a councilor. Heather, to, uh, through the chair to you, um, we keep throwing money at this mm -hmm. thing. Is it possible for maybe the council to look into, or you look into, a permanent thing and how much it would cost, and if we could get funding? I know that that's on... <laughs> I know... I'm, in, Council Adams is looking at that. I know that through CDBG we're looking at that. So it, it is part of our planning to think about what else could be done. Um, my operations manager actually knows that Oxford has just done concrete ones not a couple of years ago and wants to see if he can get the plans of what they did for their concrete ones. So yes, people are looking into concepts we don't know yet. But you know, to redesign and rebuild yeah. that whole park, you're probably still you're probably talking a hundred thousand dollars, depending on what you can get for donations and things of that nature. You know, and what you want. You know, is it a couple pieces? Do we minimize what we have, or do we want something with as many pieces as we have there now? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be discussed and planned before we just run out and start doing it. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, uh, Councilor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For you, Heather. It's not only that park we have. We mm -hmm. have a different small park. Nobody is uh, pointing on, like uh, Walcott Street. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a small park there. A lot of young kids. And happened, I was there uh, three, four weeks ago, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I see how uh, everything was uh, not safe. And you guys went there, uh, did great job. Uh, the way I see it, temporary, put mm -hmm. it back together. Still uh, fence bend. Uh, so I, I don't know, again, I agree with uh, Council Adam regarding uh, up that budget for the kids at least a little bit. They deserve to uh, have a safe park to play. You know, again, it's a lot of small park for the young kid. They need to be, uh, look at it. Uh, for a long time, nobody check them up or anything to keep them up to, uh, to date. And uh, regarding the park with the Council Adam talk, I think, the only way we're going to move forward if we have an engineer look at it and see what we need, design it, and then we put uh, the bit out there and then we can either, the young uh, kids
kid playing there, they like to do a race fun, help the town to build it for them, you know, that, or some of the businesses will donate some money, we can do it that way if it's any, but at least they need to be a study and have an engineer what kind of ramp or jumping mm -hmm. they need and how many, you know, before, uh, but meantime, I think you should increase that budget because there's a lot of small park and need to be, yeah. Uh, I mean, and it's not, you know, it's the basketball hoops, you know, we need to be placed backwards, everyone, you know, things happen, they get used and they get, and they break and we have to replace them. And so you're going to see that and we're just getting into spring. We've been replacing fences and fixing fences and we were up at the skate park and we're like, why do we have this fence here? Maybe we don't need this fence here, but there's all of these things that we need to look at because there's a lot of repairs and even those fence repairs, that money has to come out of somewhere. So. You know, we, we're trying to go around and making sure that we can, within our budgets, do these repairs. And those, skate, those park equipment, those new playgrounds, they're not cheap. I know that the previous rec director had proposed in a capital budget to replace another one, and I believe it was Walcott Street that he had on his list. I know the town manager asked me if, I, if we needed it, and I said, let me look at it, because I hadn't really looked at it, and then we went down and... The word I got was, yeah, this one needs to get replaced. Yeah. Just like we just did the one at Henry Street. They wear out, they get old, they start to decay. Even Actually, though they have that nice plastic coating on them, they get, uh, they get to the point where the they are unsafe yeah. and they get broken. Yeah. And he identified something that was very unsafe. We had to take one take of the out. climbing elements yeah. right down because it would have broken on someone. So we have to be conscious of this. Um, you know, that, that little uh, thing you're talking about, you remove it. Yeah. You, if you keep removing thing, not, They're not fixing gonna be anything them, left. at the end they have nothing to climb on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. How many little parks do we have in town? Oh, boy. Including Henry Street, the playgrounds or little parks? Walcott Street, there's one on... East um, Morris Street, there's one on 600 block. 600 block. I think that's the three little ones. Is, oh, there's one down on, on West Street, down on the West Street Fields. Walcott. Yeah, Walcott. Walcott. 600 block. West Street. West Street School. The one in back of West Street School is technically owned by the town, not by the school. That one was just recently placed, though, by, I believe they got donations for that one. The ones down on West Street uh, near the soccer fields are newer. That was a grant less than 10 years ago. It happened while I was here. Um, we've already had to replace things down there. Morris Street, we have to replace things almost all the time down there. Those little ride-ons or take them out. They seem to get abused a lot. And then Walcott Street. And then on top of that, you have the large fields. And then the large fields on top of that. And basketball courts, Morris Street, Henry Street, Capillo Park. And you're talking $2,500. Yeah, it's not very much money. No, it's not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Adams. Can I just caveat real quick on, on the comments made by the councilors and citizen members? <clears throat> I will say the short-term fix is the, the increase in, in the line item. Um, but again, that's going to... As Heather pointed out, that's only the last couple of years. Uh, we do have families and, and people that are willing, and actually 16-year-old, 15-year-old kids who are willing to come down with a saw and start fixing it. Um, it their right way, in, in their idea. But, I um, mean, obviously that comes with liability as well. But So we do have volunteers. We do have that area. We have one, some parents that are willing to donate some money or raise some funds for it as well and gift it over to the town specifically for that park, um, but uh, the long term is, is adopt a park program, um, private, public partnership, um, and stuff like that. So we already have companies that are looking at adopting parks and individuals looking at adopting parks as well. So that's a long term plan, along with the cement and steel ramps through grants or something like that, engineer study. So just wanted to say that there, it's actively being worked on. It's been worked on for a while. This just continues to put it over the edge one piece at a time, literally. So um, I will say this is when they fix it, they fix it for safety more so than 
than just looks. Um, they've taken ramps off because they are very, very dangerous. And then they've um, um, built up other ramps as well to help them out and, and keep the kids safe over there because you, you do have young adults all the way down to five-year-old kids on their BMX bikes and they ride it hard. So that's all I have. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councilor Steves, did you have a question? Um, I was actually just going to, to support the idea of what Dave was saying and suggest that we amend the budget for recreational materials to add to 2500 which would make the grand total budget eight, $1,839,527. So you're making an amendment to yeah. the budget to add how much to that uh, line item? 2,500. You're adding 2,500 to the line item. That's what she was saying. That seems to make sense. All right. Do I have a second on that? Well, uh, I, Mr. Chair, That's I good. think we should give more. I don't think it's enough, 2,500, Council of Steve. That would bring it with, to With five, six, uh, a park we have to keep him maintained, you know? Especially one, uh, the one I'm pointing on, they need uh, wiring and pipe all the way around almost. That's 2,500 right there. <coughs> Let's be fair for the kids. Oh, I totally, well, I, I totally agree. And I think that what Heather was saying a few minutes ago is that if we were to really address the parks the way they need to be addressed, we need to figure out how much it'll cost to do it properly. I'm thinking this is just kind of a stopgap measure for now, as in a couple, so she'll, she'll have 5,000 bucks to play with rather than 2,500. And, and then maybe, maybe within the next year, we can get a better handle on what the parks actually need. So we can, so we can address them better either through TDBG or park grant or or the budget or a combination of, the, of these funding sources for the next fiscal year. Mr. Chairman, could I ask a question? Can sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I just procedurally, I want to say the other night um, at one of the other subcommittee meetings, someone asked to make an amendment in this discussion that at this level, you were just recommending or not the, the, the budget as presented. I thought there was a discussion that um, customarily, you did not make amendments. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I would caution on is if you're adding somewhere, we're going to have to look at taking somewhere, and I would like to know what the proposal is. And then, thirdly, um, you know, we're still waiting to hear what's happening with any of these federal monies relative to um, what's already in the COVID 19 monies, what we can use those for. Uh, they may be providing some offsetting funds somewhere that would allow us to move things and then any potential infrastructure. So I, I would just advocate at this point that you look at the budget as presented and then wait till you get to the full council to make any real changes. And that would also buy staff some time to look at some places where if we were going to move it, we can move it or maybe we would have some additional information about monies coming from the state or federal government. Uh, thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Um, does anybody else have anything else on that? Uh, so if we, this could be done at the full council meeting, correct? It doesn't have to be done tonight, correct? No, Mr. Okay. Chair, it doesn't yeah. have to be done, but I will say, if you, if you don't mind, Go ahead. I do know last year we did amend, but we also, we amended some of the budget, but we decreased it, we didn't increase it. So we amended that right there on the spot, and then it went to the full council with no problem. I do think that's a way you can do it, but I, I kind of agree maybe with town, the town manager just to see what we can do at the town council uh, by amending it by $2,500 or, or make a motion to amend it. Okay. $2,500 gives the town employees a little bit of time to find that cash. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is that okay with you, Councilor Steves? Yeah, that does make perfectly good sense. I, while you were saying that, I was trying to, trying to remember, I don't have my charter in front of me, but there was a quirk in the charter that says we can, I think it says we can cut, but we can't increase without a certain, without having to do something special. special. And I, I don't have it in front of me to check it, but. All right. So Thank yeah, you. I can withhold it and we can, we can debate it at the council. Okay. Councilor Daniel. Just as a point of information, just as a point of information, 
the charter says that if you're keeping things the same or uh, reducing uh, the budget, it's a five vote vote. You need five votes in that affirmative. If you're going to add to the budget, you need six. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that clarification. All right. Um, so the only question I have about that park in particular is that I took a ride up there, and some of that, some of that skateboard looks pretty dangerous to me. Some of the metal is coming up. I don't know how much $2,500 would go to fixing that. And also the fence, uh, the fence was... Look, somebody surface. tried to jump the fence, I think. And there's a, isn't there a steep hill behind there that if you didn't have a fence there, it could be dangerous? Well, it, it kind of goes to the question, which is more dangerous, running into the fence or running into grass? And <laughs> yeah, there's a hill and yeah. then there's a drainage swale yeah. in between there and then it goes down a steep hill. Right. And I, I agree with you. I can see kids saying, you know what, I'm going to take my bike and ride right down this hill. And it's probably dangerous. But what they're doing is taking their bikes and riding right up onto the fence. Because um, <laughs> we fix that fence every year. All right. You know, so I don't know which is more dangerous. Um, I haven't had a chance to really look into the guidance of why is there a fence. It's not a, it doesn't meet the strict drop-off requirements of a three-foot straight drown drop because it's on a slope. Um, but I see both. I see both. I don't know which one is really more dangerous because what they're doing right now is riding up on the fence. Yeah. I mean, and it's what it is, is, and you know what, I, we, we say this sometimes, you know, kids are going to be kids, and what looks like it's a lot of fun, they're just going to try to do it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> some also, also some awful nasty... Uh, graffiti down there that probably should be cleaned off, so thank you. Uh, unless anybody else has anything else, why don't we take a vote on it as is. So the vote is to uh, accept the DPW uh, budget in the amount of $1,837,027.00 uh, um, It was, the motion was made by Steve Lazo and seconded by Steve's, so we'll take a roll call. Uh, Councilor Marchetti is a yes. Councilor Dow? Councilor Steves? Yes. And uh, Citizen Member Lazo? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Heather, very much. So moving on to the next amend, uh, agenda, review the FY 2022 snow and ice budget in the amount of 400000 and entertain a motion to vote to submit to Council as presented. To have a motion, please? Got a motion here. Second. Second. So the motion is made by Steve Lazo, uh, Citizen Member Lazo, and seconded by Councilor Dow. Mr. Town Manager. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'll hand this directly to uh, Ms. Blakely. Uh, as you'll see, she's not requesting anything more than was requested in FY 2021. And if you have any questions, you can ask them directly. Thank you, Heather. So this is our snow and ice budget, and I think all of you might be familiar with the fact that we, this is a budget you can never reduce. Once you get it at a certain level, you can't go back down. That's by state law. Um, this is a budget, though, that you are allowed to overspend on and then fund it after the fact. We have been very fortunate in the past two years that we haven't had to do that. We've been actually under budget in both years, so which is wonderful. Um, this year, we got very fortunate and it decided that it wasn't going to snow in February and March and April and became beautiful and you know I came for a transfer and I never needed it so I guess maybe every year I need to come for a transfer and say I need more money into the a labor account because obviously we had one really bad two-week period where we had a really big labor cost and then it decided it wasn't going to snow anymore and I'm very happy about that to tell you the truth because I was done. Um, so we're in good shape, um, and, and, and truthfully, we've been doing very well in this budget in the past five years even. I think, I don't have the data in front of me, but I know from, since we've calibrated our trucks, we've actually used a lot less um, salt, and that actually keeps your price down because that is really where it is price dependent. I will tell you that our price for salt this year had gone down even over last year, and salt is very dependent on the price of oil because it comes in big ships and comes across. So next year we've already been told that it's likelihood that it's going to go up. 
Um, so be ready to see it increase next year. The good news is we're starting with a full salt shed, so maybe we won't have to buy as much next year at the higher price. Um, so level fund, we split it into two line items. One is salary to cover my, oh, the overtime for my staff, and the other is for supplies and contracts, and that is the only two things that we have, basically, and repair vehicles. So those are what comes into those two line items. I've tried to explain any more or answer any more questions. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any of the counselors? No questions. Councilor Steves? No, I'm okay with it. All right. Um, thank you. I don't have any questions either, so I, we'll just go right to the vote. Um, I'm a yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. And Citizen Member Lazo? Yes. Thank you very much. Agenda item number three, we review FY 2022 Sewer Enterprise Fund in the amount of $4,875,044 and entertain a motion to vote to submit to council as presented. Mr. Town Manager. Mr. Gannon, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will defer to Ms. Blakely on these, the, the two enterprise funds. We have sewer and water. Again, it was uh, consistent with their other budget. There was not a significant increase in the um, sewer. And similarly, the, um, the overall water budget was, was not, uh, didn't have any marked increase. So with that, I would defer to Ms. Blakely for there any questions. Thank you, Heather. Um, so starting with the sewer budget, you may go line by line, Chairman? Yes, please. Okay. The first line is maintenance. This is the maintenance line that um, the, for maintenance of the equipment down at the plant. Second line is collection systems. Those are both flat funded, um, have been for the past couple of years. Electricity, which is a large line item at the plant. Um, electricity down there is totally driven on flow, and our flow is completely dependent on our inflow and infiltration, um, which we will be making a big effort in the next couple of years of trying to reduce um, for two reasons. We have to buy our discharge permit, and obviously our plant is going to run better if we don't have a lot of um, inflow and infiltration, which You'll hear me talk about a lot, but it does, it's probably the biggest thing right now that is affecting our treatment plant. So we have increased that just to make sure that we can cover our costs. You can see our actuals from 2020, we're just at that 350. Um, but so we have increased that electrical line item. Data processing, they do have a copier that they cover the cost for down there. Repair and maintenance of equipment. This is both for the, the actual building itself and for um, their trucks and stuff that we do the repairs on at the plant. Specialized services, so yeah, so though everything's level, level funded. Specialized services covers the cost for um, police um, details, testing and evaluation. We, um, you can see that I did increase this budget. This is the budget that we actually did a transfer not too far long ago because of the cost of our compost permit and having to do those additional tests. So because that is not in their agreement, we have, that's a line item for that covering. Uh, DPW administration, this is the indirect cost line item. Um, this is the cost sharing that comes back to the town out of the enterprise account. This is, there's a indirect cost study that is done every couple of years and both water and sewer looks at how much time I spend, how much time my staff spends, how much time the um, assessors spend for billing, how much time Karen's department spends, and they come up with a number based on our salaries and our time, you know, percentage-wise, and it comes back to that. So there's an indirect cost study. We've increased it 2% to basically reflect our 2% increases in all of our salaries. Operations contract. Um, every year we have to guess kind of at what the CPIU is going to be. Um, so that is reflected here. 
as 2.9%. It could be less, it could be more, but we don't really know until we get to that day of when it's decided on the contract, which it's in the contract, I believe, in the contract for June, for July, to be able to, for the following year. Chemicals, we no longer have to pay any additional chemicals because it was wrapped into the cost of the permit. Compost, same thing. Just want to make sure I understand. Any charges? What that is? Oh, is that other year? So that next line, if you're looking, it's prior year charges. That's where anything that's encumbered goes. So you see a number. So anything that pay, bills at the end of the year that don't get paid get wrapped over into the next year. Um, uninsured sewer, we, we carry a cost of $10,000 um, in there just in case. Uh, we ha we're not covered by insurance for sewer backup, so we have to cover carry costs in case we have to do a cleanup if there's a backup. Insurance and property. We were actually able to reduce ours based on what our actual was this year. Last year we thought they were going to go up a lot, so we had increased the budget. Um, after looking at what they were actually this year, we were able to decrease them back down. You guys freak me out when you look up there. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> um, so we, we, we have reflected that reduction in to be closer to what we're actually spending. Still increase a little over what the actual was to cover, but down. Legal, um, just in case we need to consult any legal services, but the con as long as the contract stays good, we should be fine. You see these numbers with that 18, 532, all of those other numbers for a while. Those are projects that are still ongoing from previous years, and the year is like the 18 or the 19 that we've encumbered the money. But our next year numbers start with 22. And I believe, I know there's probably some questions because it wasn't included in your packet originally. You were sent an email today with a with the capital budgets or you were told about that. Oh. So instead of going through all those, those are previous capital in what we call in budget capital line items where we pick small projects or projects that we think we can do under the budget without taking out any borrowing and we cover those costs. <coughs> um, this year, what we're proposing with the 20000 for the system capital. That's for your root treatment. So we do root treatment in various areas in town where we know we have infiltrating roots into our sewer system. So that's your root treatment. And then under plant capital, it's $430,000. That includes replacement of plant water pumps, plant water strainers, um, replacement of the roof on the waste sludge um, building and primary clarifiers, plant the generator, a new access platform for the new generator we have that wasn't part of the contract and paint the primary clarifier and ironwork repair, which is $200,000 budget. So those add up to your 430. Then we have 75,000 for an odor, for updating the odor control study and a miscellaneous engineering support in case something happens in any of these things that we need to hire an engineer to consult on something small project wise. Not major project, but you know It's not the odor control study because we know that's going to be 50000 Sometimes we don't need this. Sometimes we do need this. Um, it kind of is year-to-year -year dependent, but we kind of like having it in there in case we need it. 
things come up at that plant that we got to call somebody, we need to have a budget to say what's going on here, we need some support right now. Thank you. Then we have $100,000 that we always cover in capital reserve. It's kind of the emergency fund in case something goes wrong down there or a project goes over budget and we need some money and we can fund it. Or, you know, we have a major breakdown in a pipe pump and we don't have enough in our plant capital money. We can come to you guys and say, I need to transfer out of capital reserve to be able to cover this cost, but yet it doesn't affect our budget line item. Then you have our, your loan amounts that are already included in there. Do you think the easiest way to look at those? Mm -hmm. I think Melissa did put in a pretty decent, it's not always easy to read some of these, but um, we still have Alpine Dry Sewer. So a lot of these are old debt that we're still carrying on for over the year. And I think there's a debt schedule that she provided to you. We included West Street, which I know you know is an upcoming project. So adding to it, West Street, our I&I &I issues that I spoke about, South Street Pump Station. Um, that's going to be for the generator upgrades. Denison um, Drive Pump Station and looking at our headworks. Those are already approved projects that you have. We're just starting to show them on your debt schedule. And again, I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but yeah. <laughs> They're out there. There's 20. We track them. You want to try to keep your debt relatively consistent on a long-term basis so that you're always funding your new capital projects without affecting your overall cost of your sewer system going up dramatically. Um, over the past couple of years, we've had to do bigger sewer increases. This budget is not warranting that. I think we're trying to keep our costs very stable. Um, it is a small increase in the budget of 1.2%, but over all, it's a very modest increase. I will say the other good news, um, I call it good news, is our water and sewer revenues are up last year much more dramatically than what we expected. Um, probably because of COVID, they're up, because I think more people were home. Maybe more people were doing yard work because they, they were up the biggest over the summer quarter. We still haven't got the re projected revenues from this last quarter in yet, because um, the bills are just, they just read them and they'll be doing them now and issuing them. But overall, we are definitely up over last quarter. What, how long that trend will continue is very hard to predict. The previous two years, they were down, even with our increases in sewer. So um, our usage is up which means our revenues are up. How long that stays, I, I have no idea. I can't even, I would expect they're going to drop back off again, but I think that allows us to kind of flatline the budget and wait to see what happens. Um, so when we start talking water and sewer rate increases, I know we said to put a 4% increase in the budget memo, but that was really, be <laughs> the memo has to come out before I even do these budgets. So we're trying to take a guesstimate. I don't think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be much smaller, most likely closer to a 1%, but I don't want to, I don't, I don't make those decisions that even the recommendation comes as part of a team, but the goal is to try to keep a minimum. Okay. Thank you very much. I think that's one, so. Heather, I've got a question. Yep, Councillor Steves. Um, uh, two quick questions, actually. One is, how much change have we seen in customers coming online in Charlton? I know, for example, I know, for example, that Bay Path recently did. Um, and have you been in touch with um, the people over in Sturbridge about that big subdivision development that's going on that's supposed to be tapping into our water and sewer lines? Or at least our sewer lines, anyway. So, how big, of, your question was, how big an increase have we seen in Charlton? Yeah, I, I believe that was his question. Okay, so interesting enough, the water usage in Charlton has not gone up to the same effect as what the yard, water usage here has gone up. We have gone up significantly more than Charlton. 
even with the new customers of Charlton. Now, the new loop in Charlton is just starting, not very, not our, not the water line that we were, we had the oversight on. Barry Corner Road is up and completely com completed. Barry Corner Road, all of those lines, everybody's hooked up and connected. So they're using water. The new loop that I'm speaking of is the Worcester Road, old Worcester Road coming down by Bay Path and coming back into Charlton. That has just been activated last week. Bay Path was just, act the pump station for Bay Path was just activated last week. Um, they are just starting their connections. So we will see increases with that coming up. Um, they're expecting another 100 connections from that, which, you know, is, is a significant flow, plus Bay Path, plus the two schools. Those, the two elementary schools are not connected. They have to do special enclosures for their connections. They haven't been constructed yet, so we aren't seeing their usage yet, which are 8,000 together gallons per day, I think. Um, so we are seeing an increase in Charlton, but it's not to the effect of how much our increase in flow has been when I looked at their revenue numbers and their flow numbers. Uh, thank you. And what was the second part of your question? Uh, the second. Yeah. Um, it was about the, uh, the, uh, the proposed project in Sturbridge. It's just over our town line that'll, that'll actually be flowing into our sewer system. Yep. So Sturbridge has an existing intermunicipal agreement with us for sewer for that, for the Fiskill side of Sturbridge. And they have a built-in rate structure that was settled. They have spoke to us. It is within their intermunicipal agreement to send that flow within the parameters of our agreement. So they are proceeding down that path that they'll be able to send the flow towards us. Um, that is at least what they're presuming at this time. I know that they're also looking at studies to potentially putting a pump station to do to send it to Sturbridge, and you know they have to look at the long term of the agreement with us also. So, all right, thank you. Are you all set, Councilor? Yep. Thanks. Anybody else, Councilor Ryan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Heather. Um, <clears throat> Just um, the last thing, um, the last line that was skipped over, issuance expenses. Yeah, that's for issuance of new. You, yeah, you cut that out completely, so I just wanted to know why. Um, Melissa makes the determinations whether we need to have those included or not, but she, I think this year felt we, she, because they're doing the new bonding, she will already have it in this year's budget versus last. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Any questions? No. Um, all right, I think I forgot to have somebody make a motion on this one, if somebody would like to. I'll make the motion. All right. Second. I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> we got two seconds. Motion was made by Steve Lazo and seconded by Councilor Dow. So uh, I just have a couple of questions. Um, a while back, we were talking about uh, retained earnings, yep. and we sent a check to Charlton. and. Uh, you explained it to me, and I'd asked you what that meant, and you explained it to me that that's money we did not use. That's so, retained earnings. Retained earnings is a leveling of our books after, based on what we had for revenue and what we spent. Right. So basically, it's the balance of whatever we had come in in a year, and Karen probably, it's, I'll try to explain it the way I understand, and then she can probably explain it better. Um, so. We budget, she, we have our budget sheet where she gives you that top breakdown and we say this is what we expect for revenue to come in in a given year and this is what we expect for expenses in a given year. What your retained earnings is, is the difference between what you collected in revenue and what you spent. So if your revenue increased higher than what you expected and your, even if your expenses stayed level, you're going to have an excess in retained earnings. If your um, revenue was lower than you expected and your expenses were higher, you could actually have, an, you could actually go backwards. So it can go either way. We, it, you know, we budget in an enterprise account, it functions completely by itself. Everybody plucks and balances. Um, that revenue, that retained earnings, basically becomes our capital funding. If we have retained earnings, instead of borrowing, we can use that revenue to fund projects. You will see 
if you, we have recommended in the capital section, not just our smart cap, of actually using retained earnings as opposed to borrowing for some projects we already have proposed to do. Um, that includes, I can't, I could probably find it here in my notes, but there's different projects that this year, instead of, even though you've already authorized us to borrow, we're going to say, voted out of retained earnings, we don't need to borrow this money, which saves the sewer, whatever it is, it saves the ratepayer from having to pay for that year after year after year. It saves it because basically it's like you having a savings account and saying, I'm going to go buy that car instead of borrowing for it. So you wouldn't recommend using some of that to offset the uh, rate increase? I, I wouldn't recommend it because you can't budget for that every year. Now, if your revenues come in higher, that's why I said I think we can look when we're doing that, your revenues come in high this year, maybe we say, okay, we, we, we're gonna, we don't think our revenues are gonna stay that high, but maybe they're not gonna come down as low as we thought to previous levels. So maybe because our revenues are gonna be higher than what we projected based on last year, we don't need a rate increase. Okay. Or we can have a small rate increase. The issue with doing zero rate increase is you're never accounting for inflation. Everything inflates. If you don't keep it incrementally going up just a small amount, then you're going to get hit with a big amount in the future. I'd rather have the money in retained earnings and tell you that I don't have to borrow for something because of it, because we did really well this year, we didn't spend all the money or for whatever reason we have excess in, in okay, so now next year when I come in, I need to do this project, but I don't need you to we don't need to borrow for it. You're going to save in the long run by not having that in your, in your long-term budget. Now, it's good to have some debt going forward because you always want to have that to stabilize, keep, keep your rate nice and stable, have some dropping off, have some going on so that it stays nice and stable because you don't want your rate to go up and down like this. No. You want your rate to go nice and stable right. so everybody can kind of say, yes, I understand. Okay. What else happens with water and sewer rates in general is when we raise rates, that's when everybody turns off the faucets. That's when everybody gets the water-saving toilets. That's when everybody puts the water-saving showers on because they want to conduct, cut down their water use, which is awesome. But what that has an effect is when, you, when our usage goes down, that can drive the rates up. Whether, and our budgets aren't even really changing that much because you have to still collect the same amount of money. So sometimes your rate is driven by usage, not not what you project to do. All right. Okay. And what about stabilization fund? Where are we at with that? So that's just for water. Mm -hmm. We, what happens with the stabilization account in water, in, and the reason we do this in Charlton, is what we did a couple years ago, is we set up a stabilization account instead of just leaving it retained earnings. In sewer, we just leave the money in retained earnings from year after year, and it just grows. All right. In water, because we have to reconcile our accounts with Charlton, we vote, we get our certified retained earnings for that year, we pay them what percentage they get based on that sh revenue sharing account that we have, but this is something that we all have to keep an eye on. We don't want our retained earnings to be too high in, I don't really want to say this, how do I say it? The higher our retained earnings are, the more we're going to pay Charlton. So when I budget for water, I want to spend as much of that money as I can. I want to do those projects and I want to get them done, no matter what. And if there's excess money there, I want to spend it because I don't want to give them any of it. Just, just me because I want it here in this town. I don't want to give them 10% of $40,000 or $100,000. I'm just, I'm, I don't, I'm like you, I don't particularly like the agreement. I understand how we got there, I was part of it, I know why it's there. I can respect that and I know why it's there and I try to force them to do their upgrades and you have your money and if you have a break then you're using your money and not using Southbridge's money because I, I guess I, you know, it's, it's my department. It's my water department and I don't want that. So I will try to spend as much of it. It's very hard. 
You can't always spend it all. It's, I'll be honest, you know, sometimes things don't cost as much as we expect them and there's excess money. Right. But if there's something that I can spend it on, I'm going to spend it. All right, thank so you. So I will come to you and guys go, I want to spend this money out of the water department at the end of the year and you're going to know why because I don't want to give it to them. All right. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yep. <laughs> All right, thank you. If there's no other questions, then we'll just take a vote on this. Everything, everybody's okay? All right. Uh, Councilor Marchetti is yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Steves? Yes. And Citizen Member Lazo? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item number four. Review FY 2022 water enterprise budget in the amount of $4,249,000 and $349, and entertain a motion to vote to submit to council as presented. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. A motion made by Citizen Member Lazo, seconded by Council Dow. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I will not repeat my comments of earlier, um, other than to say that there's uh, less than 1% increase in the budget. I'll move that out any longer to Ms. Blakely. All right, thank you. Heather? Yep, um, I will start off to say that this one is a little harder to predict because we are in the middle of putting out to bid our contract operator operations. So um, some of the th light items have been decreased to zero because they will be wrapped into that item. Um, but we don't know where that's going to come in. So I've tried to leave it with enough money that I think will be underneath that. but. Until we get those bids in, um, in June, we really won't know who our contract operator is and what that yearly amount is going to be. So we may have to look at this and rearrange some of the budget line items in here, but at this point, we got to give you a budget. So I'm going to give it, you know, my best guesstimate, wrapping the couple of things that were not included in the contract that will be included into that and making sure there's a little bit of safety factor. So again, we have maintenance of the facilities, electricity, we've kept flat because we've been really good at keeping it there. This one's not as much dependent on flow, we kind of can predict now. Um, data processing, um, they have more data processing and computers and internet service up there um, to be able to run that plant as a SCADA operated plant then we see down at the sewer. <coughs> repair and maintenance of equipment. That's, again, the equipment that we repair here at the DPW. Specialized services, again, is for the police. Testing evaluation, you can see that I decrease that to $3,000 because um, there'll be less testing and evaluation that is not covered in the contract because it will be wrapped into the contract. I want to leave some safety in there because there's always, the DP has different things that they come out with that they basically aren't in your permit, but they want you to, to, to do sampling on. And we don't always know what those are up ahead of time, so they can't include it in the contract because they're, they're kind of things that they want to look out for or see how things are, reacting or what kind of things. Um, you know, PFAS is going to be one of those things they're going to ask us to look at in the future. So we want to have a budgeted line item that we can at least fall back on, but it won't be the full thing. Indirect costs, I spoke about that in the sewer a little bit. Again, that is the, pers that is the money that comes back to the town um, from the enterprise funds to supplement into the town budget. And it, you'll see it in the town budget. Basically, it's part of my salary, it's part of my staff's salary, it's part of Karen's salary, it's part of the time managed salary. There is a percentage of that indirect cost study. Maintenance of trees. Um, I know some of you have had the pleasure of being up in that watershed and uh, know how big it is and vast it is, and sometimes we do have to have trees taken down up there or some trees cut and different things. It's a line item so that they can do tree maintenance up there. Here is your management fee. This is the operations contract. You can see I kind of rounded the number and kept it at 1.4 million. It is an increase of 3.7%. It does incorporate the testing and the chemicals into it. So that couple of the other line items went down, that one went up, but it also includes 
to be able to make sure we have enough flexibility going forward with a new contractor or, or the same one. Prevailing wages. When we have, there are certain tasks that the water department does, repairing hydrants, repairing valves, repairing water mains, changing out water meters, painting hydrants, if you would believe it, um, that they, we pay them a differential on the prevailing wage scale, and that's what this comes out of. So they don't get paid the prevailing wage rates all the time. It's just when they do certain tasks that would be considered it's not, I think the way they represent it is non-maintenance related. Um, why painting? I, don't, I, I could argue that, but that's, that's the way the state has interpreted it. So they do do those tasks for us. That's how the agreement is structured. It will be structured the same way going forward where we just pay a differential to them. Not, you know, basically whatever they get paid, we don't pay that because that's part of the contract. Chemicals, again, I reduced. I kind of spoke of that before. Oh, inventory. This is a small equipment inventory, like meter parts, parts and pieces um, that we have to have in stock in case we have to go out and fix something quickly. We have it all in stock, so that is our small, our small inventory. Chemicals we reduce because it will be all part of their agreement going forward next year. License permit, they, we have to pay a licensing fee for the water department. Um, it comes from DEP. Is that what that is? License permit. Oh, sorry, I can tell you what this is. License permit and taxes. This is our tax bill from Connecticut, because we own land in Connecticut, so we get to pay taxes down there. <laughs> the water department's watershed in, extends into Connecticut. We have some land in Connecticut for part of our watershed. Then we have our DEP fee. As a nonprofit organization, how do, why do we pay taxes on land in Connecticut? Pardon? What? Hold on, Councilor Stevens. I, I understand that we own the land, but, it, but as a legal nonprofit, why do we pay taxes? We shouldn't be paying taxes on, on that land. I, I know we unless do. I, unless, I'm, <laughs> unless I'm wrong about etiquette tax law, which I know nothing about. So. It's very difficult to hear, Councillor Steve. You could just slow it down a little bit. I was just curious about since we are another community as a legal nonprofit, why, why do we pay taxes in Connecticut? I mean, I know we own land, I get that, but it doesn't make sense that we would be paying taxes to the state of Connecticut. I can't answer that. I guess I can look into it, but I know that it's been something that we've done since I've been here, and it's never come up. So I guess we're going to have to look into, I know it's a property tax, and that's what we pay. Okay. Councilor Ryan? If, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Hold on. I know in, in my previous community, we had land that we owned in another community, and we thought the same thing, but we wound up having to pay taxes, and we went through the state, and um, at least municipality to municipality, we had to pay our taxes in the other community. So I would trust on that same theory, probably state to state as well, but I'm happy to take a look. Okay, well, that makes sense, but this doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you. Councilor Ryan? That was actually the point I was going to make, so thank you, Mr. Manager. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I went over the water fee. You can see we have a line item for Charlton IMA. Those are the actual amounts that we've paid in the last two years. We can't budget for that because it is a calculation. We just need a count that we pay out of it, and we come to you and have you transfer the money in. Prior to your charges, again, that's kind of anything that is an encumbrance that's not part of one of those small cap items gets rolled into there. Conferences and meetings, it's a small amount in case I basically it'd be for me to go to a water conference or you know, dues and subscriptions. Insurance premiums, again, we've been able to reduce this based on actuals um, after consulting with Melissa. We have a small increase, but we've reduced it back down. Legal, we've kept 
the legal at 10,000, um, down from the 15 this year. This year we're going through our agreement. Hopefully it will be all down, done, but it's kind of a placeholder in case we need any legal. Again, you can see, um, so one thing you'll see, and if you were familiar, we had 165,000 drop off of the budget this year because our, our agreement for our meter reading software and upgrades to replace all the meters in town has been completed. Um, so that has come out of the budget, so it's not in there anymore. Again, you can see we have some small line items going forward. Some of them have been canceled out this year. Get down to the 22 budgets. And I believe you were sent again this morning. So again, we have in-system items that we break down um, capital. Some of them are capital, some are just operating things that we have, like the routes that we do every, but we just budget out of these light items. So for example, our, um, this year we'll be doing a leak detection program. It's every other year we're kind of required to do a leak detection where we go, we have an independent contractor come in and we bid it out, water department bids it out, and they come in and they listen to all the things and try to identify where any leaks are, if they're on the private side or they're on our side to try to minimize our leaks. We do a really good job here where we don't have a lot of leakage based on our, our balancing reports, but we, you know, leaked water is not water that you're ever going to sell, so you want to make sure that you keep it in your pipes. And DP has a range that they, for unaccountable water that they want you to stay in, which is 10%. So we try to keep, make sure we're under that. So there's a leak detection program that's done every two years, which is recommended by the state. We have funding for hydrant and valve replacements. We still have, we have hydrants in this town that are approaching, or I probably could tell you that are probably a hundred years old <laughs> so um, you know this water system just like the sewer system even though our plant is not is new 20 years old new um, new <laughs> not really that new anymore but our water system we have pipes major we have many systems in many places in this town that our pipes and our infrastructure is over a hundred years our push in the future will be to be upgrading our infrastructure of our pipes because that is our asset that is in the best most need to be upgraded um, you know Main Street you're already seeing it and I you know I apologize every day but the price of progress is disruption for a little while so um, it is moving along we, we are having a few construction issues right now that you pro I probably will be setting up a DPW subcommittee to go over some of the costs, plus and minuses and overruns and change orders that we're going to need on the project. But um, most of it from unforeseen conditions, including that water main break, which I think you guys were aware of, that we uncovered. Um, that was an expensive night, so. That, but is, that is also the reason we're doing this. We would never have known about that leak because it was going right into Nuisance Brook and going right down the pipe. Found its way and never was going to daylight that we were going to see it. So I will be coming back for you on that. Um, we're still gathering some of the information and discussing some of the things, but they're moving forward. They're getting very close to bringing laterals into the buildings. Um, and there's some negotiations for some of these commercial buildings about, you know, what size lateral do you really want? So that will be happening over the next week. We had a big discussion about it today. A lot of the buildings are underserved by their existing laterals and probably need larger services into them. And now is the time to do them. So we are going to make, reach a, an effort to reach out to the property managers and building owners to see if they want to upgrade their services, which means paying a higher fee to connect and paying a higher fee to have a bigger meter, potentially, but I think it's the right time before we do these services, obviously, to do it, so. While you're on the issue, um, Heather, um, I gotta give the contractor uh, kudos for doing uh, quite a job up there. 
and they started early in the year with the weather. Um, my thing is, and I'm getting, and I know you must be, is the terrible, unacceptable temporary patches. Um, it's like a roller coaster. I mean, Lynch is a great company. I've seen them do work on Route 20 that their patches, temporary patches, are better than the ones on our Main Street. I realize that laterals still have to go through and the infrastructure under that road is over 100 years old. Um, but if there's any way they could do a better patch job, it would be sweet. Um, I totally avoid Main Street, <laughs> uh, front end wise. Uh, so, I mean, I just, seeing you are on that issue, if, if there was some way they could do a better patch job, it would be We're nicer. gonna pay for it, just so you know. Yeah, uh, could you give me a, a, like a timeline on when this will be done? A uh, rough timeline, I'm not gonna hold you to it, but some yeah, people are asking. Yeah, so right now we are, the, their plan is still to be done. Mm -hmm. The plan was to be done in July, before okay. July. The issue we're having, and you could probably speak to this, is those trenches need to settle. They need to settle more. If we pave it in July, I'm very concerned that we will see settlement underneath the new pavement. If we allow them to have more time and allow it to settle longer, we're going to get a better final product. So that is one of the discussions that still needs to be had and has been being had and, and batted around. Part of the reason for the July was because it's um, CDBG money. There's a very good possibility that we could still spend all the CDBG money before that deadline and leave the final pavement until later on, you know, and extend their contract so that we get a better final condition of paving. They do still need to come back and do permanent patch, which yeah. would be done before, you know, somewhere in the July time, you know, before that July time frame, which will help the condition of the road and with the patching. It's not going to make it perfect, right, obviously, right. but again, I'm sure that you can share my concern. They disturbed a lot of ledge. They had to drill and hammer and there's a lot of undercutting, which is why it's settling, um, and they're going to have to do a lot of cutting back and a lot of recompaction, and we're going to be checking compactions. I have to, because we're having settling issues. Right. Um, all those conversations are happening, but I think for the long-term benefit of the road, I would really like to wait until October to do our final paving. I would agree with that. Um, you know, I understand that. I'm in that kind of business, so I understand what has to be done. And like I say, they did a fabulous job in getting what they did so far. Um, so that, that answers my question. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else on this issue? No, okay. All right, I'll go back to, sorry, got a little distracted. That's right, that's right. So we break this down into system, equipment, treatment plant, and tech support and revenue, um, Reservoirs, dams, and um, watershed. And then there's a fifth one for facility improvement, uh, sixth one for facility improvement that we've kind of broken down this year. For our system capital, we have leak detection, fire hydrant, meters, mis that's miscellaneous replacement of meters, and, and pipe and fitting stock. Systems, 100,000. Make sure my numbers all go. We have... Pump um, station maintenance, pump station control equipment, calibration and maintenance, and so those are, oh wait, where am I? Oh, that was still system, sorry. Um, okay, equipment, 100,000. Replacement of a Ford F-350 with plow for 50,000, that's a 2012. That's on that 10-year capital plan for all of our, uh, our vehicles that we've tried to maintain. Um, been much more successful in water and sewer than I have anywhere else, so trying to keep them. This will, just so you understand, this would go to DPW, and DPW would trade in one of their older trucks, probably Unit 30, which is also a pickup truck. It's kind of one of the ways we're rotating our staff, our equipment out. It's not that it's not useful. It's mid the 10-year. I can fund it here. 
I can take a DPW truck that really is in bad shape and get it out and use this truck for another couple years and get more mileages out of it. We're, it, it, we're trying to get the oldest stuff out first, so we will trade in the DPW and use this one, which will fund a new vehicle here. Radios. Um, so that kind of goes into that 100,000. Treatment plant, miscellaneous treatment plant upgrades, building security upgrades, um, filter plant and valve automation upgrades. So for those of you who have been through our filter plant, you know we have a lot of automatic valves. They take regular maintenance, they take regular calibration. Sometimes they go, the motors go, we have to replace them. We kind of have a line item account for them. Chemical feed pumps, same way. So that totals up to the 150 in that line item. Then we have tech support, uh, 51,500, which includes our SCADA maintenance and programming. Miscellaneous engine, engineering support, again, if we have a problem, and utility cloud um, maintenance agreement. Uh, utility cloud is our programming software that both water and sewer and DPW have started using. Um, not as much in DPW, we don't have the tablets and stuff that, that they use, but basically the water department has all of their systems so automated now that when there's a work order created, they go out, they can record a meter, they can record what we do, they can record the breaks, they can record everything, and it's shown on a GIS platform. And it's all logged in there so we can see it. They're probably the most technologically advanced of all three departments that I run. They're also some of the younger people in, our, in the group, so they, it helps because they're more technologically not scared. <laughs> um, but it, it is something that we work, we use it now to do all the maintenance that we're using it at the DPW to record maintenance on all our vehicles and my mechanics really actually like it because it gives them a way to look back and see what they've done in the past on a vehicle. So they have embraced it, so we've kind of expanded it. We're going to expand it into our catch basins monitoring and inspection program so we can tell when we've done a catch basin, which is part of our MS4 permit. So we're expanding, smallly, small steps. Um, there are some fees that go along with it. You know, you need the equipment, you need tablets and things to be able to imp input this data. Um, the water department's been able to, through, their, through the water department, kind of acquire those. I don't have them in my DPW budget yet. I may be looking at purchasing them, especially for the catch basin, but sewer is starting to use it. They haven't embraced it quite as much as what I would like, but we're working with them. Small steps. The facilities improvement, um, we have some asphalt up at the plant that is in horrible shape. I think it was paved right over topsoil. It's completely undermined. <laughs> it needs to be ripped out and new replaced. A couple of our other, including Mass Ave, I don't know, some of you might not know where Mass Ave is, but that is where over off of Worcester Street. That road goes up like this. Again, some of our asphalt is failing. So we want to do a pay, some pavement plans for there, for the plant, for uh, Cohassie, which is our large dam. Um, some of the pavement's starting to fail over there. So we want to make sure we address those, and that's what's in that facilities management, that facilities improvement section. And um, a lot of those things came out of that facilities management plan, so we, that's why we're calling it facilities improvement there. I know some of you are familiar recently with that water and sewer part of that facilities management structure plan and had some, um, we're trying to follow that in these plans that we developed for the O&M on them. I think that's it. Uh, then we can go into our, Again, we have cap capital reserve, $100,000 that we hold there, and then you have your debt service. Um, we have to budget, you see those, yeah, there it is. 
in our budget for our systems budget, also in the IMA agreement, they get 50, they get 10 percent, I think it is. They get the same percentage of what they get back in the IMA from our capital systems budget, so we have to put a line item in our budget for Charlton. The 15 grand is in there based on what last year's percentage was that we paid them, okay? And that's based on, they get a percentage basically of our capitals, of our systems budget is the way it's written. So our systems, when we look at system in budget capital, it's because they have a part of our system. Make confusing sense, I guess. Again, we are looking to borrow for the South Street um, transmission main, which is going out to bid, I think, next week. Um, that's for South Street resurfacing and replacement of the transmissions main on South Street. For those of you not familiar with that project, the all the water mains from the water treatment plant come down South Street. There's two mains there. There's a high service and a low service main. They're transite, which is basically um, a transite pipe had asbestos in it, so it has some inherent problems and weaknesses. It also is known to, over time, degrade and become weak. We kind of identified it as a weakness in our system and uh, decided that we, before we redid South Street, which desperately needs to be repaved, we are going to replace those mains. Those mains are part to, to be replaced with two big mains coming down for high and low service and the whole road reconstructed. So that is going out to bid very soon. I have a meeting on it tomorrow and um, basically finalizing the plans and specifications and then we'll be ready to go out and hit the street probably to start this fall um, into the winter and getting that main work done and then repave in the spring. Summer, spring, summer. Questions? Oh, okay. You're, you're all set? I, I think so. All right. <laughs> I'm done talking. <laughs> Councilor Daniel. Wow. Thank you. I'm just curious, is the, is the South Street project mm -hmm. start at the town line? It does. The water lines don't start up there, but the project will start up there. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to marry where... Um, Sturbridge just redid their road. We'll start there. We have some minor drainage improvements up on that section of the road. Um, it will be all repaved. It's, it's full depth reclamation that we're going to do because by the time we rip up that road, you, you, talk about, you talk about Main Street not being good, you're not going to want to take South Street from into Sturbridge anymore either. So The detours will be horrible as it, as it is, so it will be quite interesting. The road's not very wide. We have to replace both lines, it's, and there's a sewer line on part of it, so the whole road's going to be ripped up. So it's, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, it's way be around fun. it. <laughs> don't, just don't go that way. When it starts construction, I will say my best advice is don't go that way, including myself, which I take that road every morning. So <laughs> um, it will be interesting, but it's again, it's one of those things we need to do it, so we're going to do it, and it's, you know. Nobody's going to want to do any more construction projects pretty soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes, we will. <laughs> well, what's the you saying? All set, Things Councilor? have to get worse before they get better. Yes. You all set, Councilor Daniel? Yes, thank you. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Comments? Councilor Steves? All right. Oh, I'm okay. Thank you. All right. Well, then, seeing no other comments, we'll take a vote. Uh, Councilor Marchetti is yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Yeah. Councilor Steves? Yes. And Mr. Lazo? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. So I guess we'll have a motion to adjourn. Unless somebody wants to bring anything up. I have, I have an issue that I'd like to ask Kevin about. Sure, go ahead. OK, Heather, um, this was brought up to me today before I came here. Uh, it's a person who lives in the Brentwood Drive area. They like the road all paved over and everything and they called me and they were really concerned why they dug it back up now <laughs> I think this uh, there was something to do with the structure in the road I don't know I haven't been up there they um, so over the winter we found one drainage manhole cover that had failed had, it was an old one that was used that was used and it broke 
and it had to be replaced. Um, it cracked, it was unsafe, had to be redug up and replaced. They didn't see it before they paved? Um, obviously not. I, I think, not. truthfully, it got put, it, the old one got put back and it was okay, and no. then it got hit by a plow and broke. Oh, okay. So it just got caught. We noticed it actually over the winter when we were plowing, and it took a chip, a pretty good sized chip, oh, out of the frame, so it wasn't something we could leave. So unfortunately, yes, we had to dig it back up and okay. replace it. Okay, that, that answers the question for that person. <laughs> <laughs> so Thank you. We will make sure that it gets sealed around it and that it's, you know, Hopefully stays good for... All right, thank you I very haven't much. seen the repair myself yet, but I will be up there soon to look at it. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. That's all I have. Uh, Councilor Lyon? Just a quick thing. I just want to thank Heather and Matt. Um, you responded to a constituent issue. Um, the constituent, as you know, probably know already, is not happy about the answer. Um, but I want to thank you for your prompt response. It was done. She, was, she messaged me that day, the day I, I called your office, and she was happy that somebody was on site that day. So I want to thank you for your promptness and your department's promptness and following up with a constituent concern. Even though it didn't work out in her favor, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Dow? You. Are you gonna hire full-time, couple of people, not part-time? You have two, couple of guys come, uh, coming up for retirement. They at least have two new uh, person trained and ready to take over. And you're buying all these new equipment and you add it, you're growing your half employee. So I, I understand your concern. I'm hoping that we get two people that come in in the summer that we can, that we like and that maybe would be interested to have this as their career and that we can get to know them and they can get to know us a little bit. Um, I don't have it in my budget to, to hire two people and have the other two people on staff. I appreciate what you want. But it would be, you know, another, it doesn't just affect my budget, but even if it was just my budget, just say it was another $100,000 on my budget to, to hire new people, plus their stipends, plus their insurance. So it becomes like $200,000 very quickly just to hire two people and have them on staff at the same time. I do have the potential of two people retiring next year. They have put it in. Um, I know Karen has carried it into their budget. Um, I, again, whatever we do in ad, we have to figure out where we're getting the money from. So if that is something that I, 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 I know you've expressed to me that you do think I need more staff, and I agree with you, but I was asked to put a level funded budget in. I didn't increase my staff. Um, I think in the future we will be seeing, probably maybe next year we'll start this process. We need to do um, stormwater. We need to really figure out how we're going to fund our stormwater going forward, and that potentially could include manpower um, with a stormwater enterprise account, much similar to the way we do water and sewer. Um, we have already some money to look at how we set that up, uh, but we need to figure that out really quickly because the requirements on our, on our stormwater permit are coming due very quickly, much more than what we're doing currently. What we're doing currently is like the bare minimum. We're going to have to start doing sampling and a lot more um, finding of problems where we might have people discharging illegally into the stormwater system and a lot more upkeep and maintenance. So it's very possible that that's where the funding is going to come for, for hiring more people. Because, you know, last year we don't see that the town too much clean uh, during the years. I, you know, I think the citizen like to see it more cleaner this year. Well, we, we've already started with our street sweeping program. Um, they have been out every day this spring and we're way ahead of where we were last year. I will say that. Um, that allows us to start doing other things like catch basin cleaning, which we've already started also. Like, and then as soon as we get to warm enough weather, you'll see us out there doing our line striping and our line painting. We will always do maintenance cleaning and um, uh, as we go. Um, I am still, I know, I, I, would, I have put some feelers out there to try to find out how much it would be to have a contractor come in and sweep the streets. I haven't got a lot of great feedback yet. Um, I did find out some prices to have someone come in and do catch basin cleaning. It was extremely expensive, but 
at like it, the cost of like $27 a catch basin, which you have over 2000 it gets really expensive really quick. So so it's better off to hire a few guys and, and put them on duty to help the other team to continue <clears throat> doing the job ourselves, correct? It's more cheaper to hire more I think staff. it's more cost effective to hire staff internally, yes. But that also means maintenance of equipment, which you'll see in my capital budget, we're way behind in the equipment costs. But we have equipment, but we don't use them much because we don't have staff that are being doing something else most of the time. No, our, our street sweepers are out almost all summer. Right now, this, this summer, probably now, just start now, but last year, you know, we see it once. They, they, they did more <laughs> than you think they did last year, but. You know, and, and I think, I, I don't know one guy, he can do the sweeping, he can do the, uh, you know, catch base, he can do everything. I think he need help too, you know, I think you know what I'm talking about. Uh, usually you have one or two guys only drive those big equipment well, there's only certain people that are licensed to drive it, and we have two heavy equipment operators, and they have to satisfy under their agreement first. Okay. So we put we have certain guys that drive the street sweepers because there's only certain guys that are licensed to drive the street sweepers. We have certain guys that are licensed to do the catch basin truck. So not everybody can do everything. It's not you know we we do have a lot of people that can do a lot of things, but not everyone can do everything. And we have to satisfy the two heavy equipment operators by contract first. Right now, we're having no problem doing that because we have two street sweepers out there. We have a catch basin truck out there. We've been doing stuff with our um, excavator, you know, with our backhoes. So those are all considered heavy equipment. So we've been having multiple things go on with heavy equipment. But so I, hope, I would love I to hope hire I can two see new two, people. Two I'm not telling guys, you. Full times. Uh, I think you need them because, you know, the town, they need to be in uh, clean and good shape, too, you know? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. So I'll accept the motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Second. Second by Dow. Second. Thank you. All right. Roll call. Uh, Mar Councilor Marchetti, that's me. I'm yes. yes. Councilor Dow. Yes. Councilor Steves. Yes. And Citizen Member Lazo. Yes. Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned.